A little over a week ago, I released my very first digital download texture pack called Stained. But can I tell you a little secret about that? I was scared as hell to do it. Now, of course, now that I've done the thing, I know that I had no reason whatsoever to be scared of it. Really, the only thing I was scared of was not knowing how I should do it or how I should go about it or what should I provide or what should be in it or how to give it to the people or how to share it. And I'm gonna talk about all of those things with you today so you can go do it for yourself. Hi, I'm Dave and I make things. Okay, we're gonna jump right into it. Maybe you saw a previous video where I talked about all the different things that you could possibly sell, like say on Etsy, that can be digital downloaded for other people to use. And I, I didn't even follow my own advice on that exact thing. Well, I did shortly, but it took me a little while to get to it. And so I wanna to talk to you about number one, why it took me a while to get to it. Number two, talk you through all the different things that I went through to get my product finally up on my website and to the market so that you can go and do this all yourself, or at least have a basic understanding of what's involved so that you don't have to be scared of it like I was. Scared is a really weird term. I felt like there was a lot of self-doubt, felt like there was a lot of like imposter syndrome happening. I know that happens for people, and so I wanna make sure that you understand that you don't have to fear that stuff. You don't have to worry about that stuff because once you get it done, all that stuff just goes away. Maybe when I go to deliver something that's a little bit different as far as digital downloads go, something that might be a little bit outside of my comfort zone. If I ever decide to create my own typeface or font, that might be a little bit weird for me. But for our purposes today, I've created the thing that I knew I could do and I put it out in the market and now I'm gonna show you exactly how that goes. Now, if you're not familiar with the product that I created, it's called Stained and it's 50 or rather 60 different gritty urban textures, pictures that I took around my neighborhood and I just decided to bring them together and put them as a collection and make them into a thing that other people can download. And it's almost comical how simple the idea came to me. So the concept hit me innocently enough. I was just happened to be walking outside my house and I just looked down, bam, just like that. This sidewalk's been this way for a very long time. I just happened to notice it for the first time for what it actually could be. And then I basically just spent the next two hours walking around my entire neighborhood and city and finding all the really cool textures I could. But that wasn't the end of the story. So the thing is that even though I took all these pictures, I, I couldn't just, I mean, I could probably have just put them into a folder and then sold that folder just as is. But being a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to graphics and whatnot, I decided to optimize them a bit. Not do a ton because I wanted to make sure that they maintained uh, as much of their nature as they came with. I didn't want to alter too much of the characteristics that were intrinsically what kind of attracted me to them in the first place. So if you look at the screen here, I've got this image that is the original copy over here on the left and the optimized on the right. Now at this size, you probably don't see much difference, but if I zoom in here really tight, you can see that the first thing I did is I, I, I sharpened it up quite a bit. So I roll again over here on the right, we have the optimized, and then this is the unoptimized version. And it's a little blurry when you come in here. And this is a really high resolution image still, but I wanted to make sure it was good and sharp. You can also see that I took out some of these blemishes that were here on this side. They're not over here on this side. I was thinking about getting rid of this line, but I thought, well, you never know. I mean, maybe it, maybe it works. And that's pretty much it. I, I adjusted the color a little bit. You'll see that it's a little bit more vibrant over here than it is over here, but not much because, because again, I wanted to make sure that this thing held on to its natural characteristics of what it is. If somebody wanted to make some adjustments to that on their own, then they could. They could bump up the hue and saturation if they wanted to, or they could completely desaturate it and turn it into a grayscale or black and white image if they wanted. So I did that for 50 different images, and then I added 10 different seamless images so that people could stack them together if they needed to do some sort of pattern or wanted to create a larger background. Again, these images are pretty large. These ones here were 3,000 by 4,000 pixels, and then the seamless ones were 3,000 pixels square. You didn't need to go too far to make them, you know, big, but uh, you could make them really big if you wanted to with that seamless texture. Now, the reason I only did 10 seamless textures is that it's not really easy to turn everything into a seamless texture. This would not necessarily work that well because I would have to really do some serious altering to make sure that whatever happened up here continued on to this side so that it would flow better or vice versa, left to right, up and down. Some of those didn't quite work out, but I did at least was able to get 10 out of it. 
in the future, if I'm walking around and decide to add to this texture pack, I might go out with the intention of finding things that would make more seamless textures and that way I can add to the package a little bit and also raise my price. Now one of the decisions I had to make was what was I actually going to provide for people? Of course I had the 50 different images, but the question remained should I create different variants? Should I have a smaller pack and maybe a larger pack or should I have one that is a basic license and then a commercial license and then maybe an extended license? I'm not going to go too deep into the different licenses, but basically it comes down to one if you're going to use it for personal use, the second one if you're going to use it commercially like in your own products, and third would be the extent of how far you want to push that commercial license. Maybe on a future video I'll go into the details of those three things and even other different types of licenses, but for now just assume that we're only talking about commercial licenses because that's what I ended up going. I did consider splitting it up and making it like, hey, here's 10 for like three bucks and then get 50 for however much. And so that way people maybe want to buy into the bigger one just because it's like, well, I might as well just get the whole thing. It's that whole psychology of like, hey, give people three choices and they'll almost always pick the one in the middle. I could have done that, but I decided not to. And the final decision I had to make was if I was going to provide something for my Patreon members. Now I have a Patreon, I've had it for a while and there were two initial levels. You could buy in for like a buck just to get the basics and a little bit of uh, information for me and maybe a little bit of extras here and there. You could buy in at the $5 level and you got a little bit more. You got a digital download, but it was usually just like a digital art print or something like that. Would it be beneficial for me to create a new tier so that I could bring in people who want to get these digital downloads on a regular basis and you know bring in a little bit more revenue for myself. Ultimately, that's what I chose and I created what's called the boss level. So for a few extra bucks a month, people can get these digital downloads and they also get exclusive videos and information and other things get handed to them. The thing is, is that aside from making an extra video a month, I don't really have to do too much. Anytime I create something, like say the files that I created to show the examples, which is something I was gonna show anyway, I include those files in my Patreon so that people can take a look at them, see what I did, dissect them, not use them for their own purposes because those files are mine, but still people can use them so that they can dissect them and figure out how can they apply what I did to their own work. Whether they use any of these extras is none of my business. Whether they decide to do something with it is up to them. I just provide the value and get some money in return for doing it. So the biggest decision I had to make with my Patreon, at least at that boss level, is I had to decide how much extra I was actually going to provide for people because they are paying a reasonable amount more money per month to get these extras. I wanted to make it seem worthwhile, but I also didn't want to kind of undercut myself on it by having to do all this extra work. So the next question I had to ask myself was, what was I gonna include in the package? Am I just gonna give them the files and say, hey, have a good time, good luck? Or am I gonna give them a little bit something extra so that they feel like, you know, they're, that, that, that there's a little bit more to it than just a bunch of files. This is completely up to the individual creator. Some people do the latter, where they just give you just the files. Other people include a little bit of extras, and I did that as well. I didn't go overboard. I really just included all the samples of the things that I did to show people what was possible, and I'll show you those in a minute. I also included a copy of the individual license depending on which license they purchased. Now I've seen other people include other things like PDF instruction or video instruction so that people have an understanding of how to use the thing or if it's like say a typeface and you need to install it or brushes or things like that and you need a little bit of help installing those things, I can understand where you might need to use those. Mine are just textures, they're just overlays and so I don't feel like it needed any instruction. I did create the YouTube video and I do point people to that YouTube video Video so that they can at least watch that if they have any questions or they can always reach out to me directly they do have my email address and now the question that everybody's super interested to find out where to sell it there are a lot of different options out there for you to sell digital products and it's not really a super easy answer to say which one is better than the other but I will say this pick one Pick one and go that direction. That being said, not every single option out there is just as simple as like, hey, I'm just gonna upload my thing up there. No, they have a gateway. They make sure that they are your products are good before they'll even accept you. My best advice, again, is to pick one, but pick one that is open so that you can start creating these digital products. That way, if you decide to go to one of these marketplaces like Creative Market or Envato Elements, they see the type of work that you're doing and that will give you a better leg up 
for getting accepted into their fold. But now which open market should you choose? Good question. Etsy is actually a really good place to start because you can start selling pretty quickly. A lot of people sell digital products there and you can start selling your first product for as little as 20 cents investment. Now, will you be found? Uh, I don't know, you know, probably not, but at least you can get started and have some stuff up there and then continue to keep making products and hopefully fill up your shop at some point. The downsides to selling on Etsy are of course, number one, they're gonna take a cut of whatever you make. Number two, uh, it can be difficult to be found. And number three, I, 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 not all products are gonna work on that platform. Yeah, sure, you could turn around and do punk rock stuff that's a little bit more gritty and urban, but is that really going to attract the type of people who might be shopping on Etsy for these digital assets? Because let's be honest, there is a, almost a particular type of, of person on Etsy, especially the people that might use these digital products because the types of digital products will attract a certain type of individual. Personally, I don't see a whole lot of punk rock girls going up on Etsy trying to find textures to fill in their stuff. There might be some, but it may not be enough for me to warrant putting my stuff up there because are they really shopping there? Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. I could be proven wrong, but I decided to not go that route. Instead, I decided to put them on my Shopify shop to start, and if things progress and I start to sell more, who knows, maybe I'll take it into different places. Really, ultimately, I wanna sell them on my shop, and then maybe also get them up into places like Creative Market. Now, I don't wanna have my stuff on Creative Market or Envato exclusively, but I do want to use it to my advantage to maybe, number one, garner a few more sales. Number two, just gain some attention for my brand. People will go to the offerings that you have on Creative Market, and they'll see, hey, it was created by Dave Connery, and then they'll follow you back to maybe whatever social media you have, or even your website, and then maybe purchase all your stuff directly. It's a possibility. They probably are gonna purchase through Creative Market because that's where they initially found you, but they may turn around and start to follow you on different social media accounts, and then who knows, maybe make purchases from you in the future directly from your website. Now let's talk for a second about display and promotion, because if you're a designer, and you are trying to sell these things as a designer or a maker of some sort, it is essential, it is crucial, that you make your promotional pieces as attractive as you possibly can. If you are a designer, you have no reason whatsoever to not do that thing. Because if you make crappy promotion, well, nobody's gonna buy, and nobody's gonna take you seriously, because you didn't put in enough work to make it worthwhile for people. If you're a designer, and you're not putting forth full effort on the stuff that you make for yourself, it's only gonna show through and maybe somebody doesn't buy from you for anything because they see that you're not willing to put forth the effort. In other words, do the work. But it doesn't have to be super difficult. Let me show you exactly what I did for the stained package. So I created a few different images just to kind of give people a basic understanding of what this was all about. You might think that because it's a gritty and grimy texture that I might put a gritty and grimy typeface on top of this, but no, because I wanted to make sure that the backgrounds stood out against the type. So this first one is the title page or the title image and you can see that I used texture in there and I actually incorporated a couple of different textures because I wanted to show that you can do things together. It doesn't have to be just one texture. It can be multiples and you can add more color to it and you can bring out the vibrance of it because that is the potential of these textures. Somebody will go in and they'll see the textures for what they are and then maybe go back and look at this like, wow, how did he do that? Now, maybe I should have created a little bit of a, a tutorial on this, but it really wasn't that difficult. It was a matter of just laying things over and adding a little mask and whatnot. But we don't really need to go too deep into that. Really, it's more important that I show you the other pages, which is the first one here is a little bit of a sampling of what you get. And I just realized I have a little bit of a typo. That's supposed to say 50, so I'm gonna have to fix that. But it's 50 high resolution JPEGs, and now I'm only showing the first 12, so people have to dig in deeper to see, but you can see these all in their natural state, or at least in the optimized state that I brought them. When you open up the package, this is what they look like. Same goes for these seamless textures. I only showed four of the 10, but you get a sample or at least an idea of what's going on. And if you want to go deeper, you have to buy the package. And these next few are all examples of what you can do with the textures, like create backgrounds. This poster design is something I created completely independent and then I just drop this texture in the background to create a little bit of a grit and grime for this image. I felt they worked well together. This next one shows how you can create weird and interesting textures using the textures and the displacement map tool within whatever app you're using, whether it's Photoshop or Affinity Photo like I did. This one here shows how you can turn textures into halftones and then create interesting textures on top of other images. 
And this one shows gradient maps or gradient oriented textures on top of those textures that are then laid over top of other images to create really interesting images. Now you'll note that I made these square so that I could use them on social media like I did on Instagram here. If you go to this post, you can see all of these things and uh, I still need to fix that one typo. Note to self, Dave, go back and fix that typo. But I also made the images rectangular or landscape so that people could see them this way on my website displayed in full color and a little bit larger. If you're already gonna be making these things to put up on the shop, whether it's Etsy or Shopify or on Creative Market, if you're already gonna be making these images, you might as well make some that work well on social media so that you can easily share them at the same time. You can promote on social media, send them directly to the listing you just posted on your website or on your Etsy shop or whatever, and that way they work together. There's continuity, blends and bleeds and works well together. You can always go and add more and, and adjust and add some to your shop and add some to your social media and work those in as needed. But just use them all together so that they, you know, the branding stays the same and everything's cool. Briefly, I want to go back to Creative Market and Envato just to kind of give you an idea of exactly what you're looking at when you go there. Pulled up one of the listings that I kind of like. I kind of dig this one and not because uh, I want to purchase it, but mostly because I want to try and maybe do one of my own kind of like this. But as you can see over here on the right, it says you can have a personal uh, license, you can have a commercial license and an extended commercial license. And they all come at different price points. If I go back to my website here, you can see standard license is $10, extended license is $20. And when you go down here to the bottom, you can see standard license grants commercial usage for a certain amount of stuff and extended license goes a little bit further. I go into more detail in that when I include the license in the product itself so people have the, a better understanding of exactly how they can use the stuff and I definitely encourage people to do the extended one just because it's an extra 10 bucks and then there are no limitations on it. Now, something interesting about Creative Market has changed a little bit. The portion where you apply to become a creator on their platform, this is, page is a little different than what I remember. So the situation may have changed and so I may not have this 100% correct, but before you had to basically apply. It was a curated situation. Now it just says open a shop. So maybe they've turned around and become a little bit more like Etsy where it's a marketplace that's open. I don't know that for a fact, I'll dig deeper into that for the future, but you can go ahead and hit that and then if you don't have an account, you have to sign up for one. I definitely encourage you to go explore because you never know, maybe you can jump right in there right away. But I do know that they have a certain level of expectation about what should be sold there and I don't see a whole lot of like really crap crap that you can get over on Etsy, but you never know, so go give it a shot. Now, Envato is basically the same. They have different licenses. They have a regular license and extended license, and I think all of these are commercial. They don't really have a personal use one, but you can get either one of those, and you can see the price point for them is different. A regular license is six bucks, and an extended license is 49. I haven't dug into their license spec. Let's look at their license real quick. Basically, the biggest difference between the regular and the extended is this right here. Use in an end product that's sold. If you were going to use whatever texture to turn around and make like say a poster print or something of that nature and then sell that print, you can't do that with the regular license, you would need the extended license. You already saw that the extended license is significantly more expensive than the regular license, but you're paying for a little bit more flexibility and uh, peace of mind, I guess, for your own sake. Now, Vado also has a program where you can become what they call an author. They have all different types of products. It's not just, you know, like digital download stuff. Well, it's all digital download stuff, but it could be music, it could be video, it could be mock-ups, could be all kinds of different things. They have a whole array of things that you can buy. But if you wanted to become an author, you have to apply. So it, there is a bit of a curation, and so they're probably gonna wanna see what type of work you do before they'll accept you. Now that you've got all that stuff come together and you've got it up on your shop or you have it up on your marketplace of choice, now it's time to share it with the world and to keep sharing. And you can keep sharing, not just by like putting up new pictures of the same thing over and over again, but maybe show, maybe snippet videos of how you use the, the thing that you've made so that people can have a better understanding 
And I don't mean just, again, resharing the same video over and over and over, but try different things because you never know how many different times it's gonna take somebody to see what's possible with your package so, until they decide to purchase for themselves. Maybe I need to have more texture-oriented instruction before a bunch of new people come in and buy my stuff. Have I sold a few? Yes. Could I sell a ton more? Yeah, I'd love that. I would love to sell a ton more. Please come buy all my stuff. If you want to see how I used it, go check out that video right there that I did on my other channel. Ultimately, each new post that you make about your stuff is another touch, is another opportunity for somebody to maybe, you know, be coaxed into purchasing your thing. So don't just put it out there, share it once on social media, and then forget about it. Keep finding ways to bring it back into the fold. Keep finding ways to attract people to your offering. Maybe they won't buy that one, but if you have multiple products available, maybe they'll buy that next one, or the next one after that. Or maybe they'll just sign up for your newsletter and wait for the thing that's just perfect for them and you can pitch them whenever you want. While you're waiting for them to come in and buy your thing, keep working on the next thing. Like I'm working on my next thing, which I'll show a sneak peek right here. That's all you get. <laughs> if you want to see more, stick around. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. So if you have any comments or questions or thoughts about what we talked about, go down to the comments below and let me know what you think and we will discuss it. While you're headed down there, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. You can go subscribe to the other channel too if you want. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that bell because you never want to miss a thing. If you want to see that other video where I talked about all the opportunities with digital products, it's right there. Or check out that one because that's what YouTube thinks you want to see. That's it for me. I've been Dave. You've been awesome. Go make more stuff.